Okay, I'm out uh, in what will probably be the last warm, sunny, gorgeous day here in uh, Lehigh Valley, Allentown. Until next spring, uh, it's in the 70s, gorgeous. And so, of course, on a day like today, I have to take pens out for a ride. Like, like you don't do that. Huh? Okay. Um, so, as you'll recall, a couple of videos ago, I did the Hongdian N7 Gray Rabbit with its all-black nib piston filler. You can still see the ink sloshing around. And in this video, I want to take a look at another N7. Actually, I think this came out first. Uh, before the Gray Rabbit, and that's the Peacock. Another really gorgeous pen. This doesn't have any ink sloshing around yet, because I haven't filled it or tried it. And this has a, a two-tone nib. And uh, I'm really interested to try this, because this has the first, what many Chinese companies are calling, uh, a long knife nib, what we in the West would tend to call an architect nib. And uh, it's, if you're not familiar with that, and I'll, I'll go into more detail, of course, once I get back to the castle, is um, with a stub, which most of you I'm sure are familiar with, it's cut so that uh, vertical lines are broader and horizontal lines are thinner and pr produces really nice shading to one's hand and one's writing. Well, it's the same with an architect nib, but it's, it's reversed. Uh, you're going to have thinner lines vertically and thicker lines horizontally. So I've never actually used one of these nibs there until recently. Uh, they were quite rare. Uh, most pen manufacturers weren't uh, employing them or making them. So uh, that should be interesting. And the long knife or long blade or similar names that the Chinese manufacturers are using is basically a, a translation from Japanese characters into English. And it, eh, it doesn't quite work, but we'll take a look at that. And now I have to go drive my pens. They're insisting to go to the park and enjoy the last sunshine of the season. Okay, and here we have the little aluminum pen box that most Hongdians are shipped in, uh, which protects them very well in shipping. Assuming they don't grow too much larger, these will serve them well for years. The insert in the foam is very protective. The pen fits nicely. And here we also have the little wrench that's included for those Hongdian pens that are piston fillers, such as the N7s. And here we have the lovely, lovely peacock pattern. Kind of a teal colored cap, which is really very nice. You see the peacock there at the bottom of the cap as well. And here we have the enfilial, finial, sorry. And also very, very attractive. And this has a acrylic globe uh, encapsulating the design inside. Lovely body. Each, each of these, of course, unique. And uh, just to briefly compare again with uh, the other N7 that we've taken a look at. 
the gray rabbit. You can see the rabbit there, and let me see if I can pick this up. There we go. There's the rabbit against the background of the moon. And uh, in my previous video, I discussed the significance of that in Chinese lore. And of course, this one had all black nib befitting the overall coloration of the gray rabbit. And this particular peacock has a two tone nib and has the long knife, long blade, or architect nib, which I briefly described in the opening. Now this included wrench is provided should you ever wish to remove the piston mechanism for thorough cleaning of the ink reservoir and barrel, or if you also want to uh, lubricate it at some time in the future. That's not going to be an issue for years, if ever, for most users. But uh, you would just turn the piston knob fully extended, and I'm not going to really do this now or go into great detail especially as I'm looking through a camera. But these little flanges here fit into two holes somewhere. No, there, I just went in. Okay. And once those are in position, and again, I'm not going to take this out now, you would uh, close down the filler knob to hold it in place, and then you can use the wrench to uh, unscrew and remove the piston filler, again for cleaning or for uh, eventual lubrication of the piston, if that's ever needed. It's just a nice little extra that they provide. And I guess I should show the piston in action here in the ink window. And there we go. Okay, and here we have some rather nondescript paper to uh, do a little nib comparison. Here's the really lovely Peacock N7 from Hong Dian. Hong Dian, by the, by the way, there seems to be some confusion, is actually two words. But they've gotten used to people making it one word, so either is fine, but the actual name is Hong, second word, Dion. So I thought I'd use some uh, Private Reserve Blue Suede ink, which is a uh, fairly close approximation of the pen barrel. First, I wanted to show the difference that we should expect to see between the lines produced with a uh, architect nib, such as is on here, and a stub nib, as I have on this uh, Schaefer Balance 2 pen. And I'm actually, there's a bit of a black jet ink cartridge in there, Schaefer. So I'm just going to dip it in the blue suede ink for this brief demonstration. So here we have the vertical lines and the horizontal lines. 
as you can see, this is with no pressure. Quite a difference. So let's try for the very first time. And I'm trusting, uh, just looking at the, the nib through loop, things look fine, but I'm trusting that uh, Hongdian will not embarrass me in the middle of this video with a poorly writing nib. So I'm going to turn down the piston. Submerge in the ink. Turn the piston knob again. And we should get at least a partial fill. And I may not have enough ink or be at the right angle. Let me try that again. I should have a third and to hold the ink bottle while I rotate. The piston knob fairly unsuccessfully. Well, see, I told you I was gonna be embarrassed by this. Damn, this Hongdian, no, just kidding. Okay, fully submerged now. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this. There we go. There we're getting ink into this piston filler. And I'm not going to worry about a completely full fill. I'm doing this once, but it looks like it's close to that anyway. Ooh, nice juicy inked nib. That looks great. And get a little bit more off, okay. And first touch to paper and see how this works. So vertical line, wow, thin. Horizontal line. Okay, this is not as broad as the Schaefer stub, but you can see that the uh, the variation is very much the same. Um, getting a little thicker line with the Schaefer, but I just dipped the nib and really didn't uh, clean it off in any way. So anyway, enough of my rambling. Smooth as all the Hongdian nibs have been for me, right out of the box. And here we have Hongdian as two words, but talking to uh, some of my sources in China, they're happy to have anybody put the write it this way as long as they purchase their pens. So this is a unique experience for me. As I said at uh, the beginning of this video, I've not used an architect nib before. They're still fairly rare from Western uh, pen makers and nib makers, unless you ask specifically that they provide one. And again, I set that down. Schaefer Balance 2. This is a much broader nib. I don't even know anymore what this was marked as. Let me get a loop out and see if I can see anything on the nib. Uh, 
Well, it's the Schaefer Feather Touch nib, and it's an 18K gold, whereas the Hongdian is, uh, is steel. Two very attractive nibs. Both uh, somewhat ink covered at the moment because I didn't do a complete blotting job. But there you see the difference. I was going to say in black and white, but in blue suede and sort of, sort of a tan colored paper. So there you go with a comparison of the two nibs and uh, personally I think I'm uh, well I'm gonna really enjoy writing with this long knife architect nib over the next week or so but uh, it's already captured my my interest for what it does to my hand and the appearance of my handwriting and uh, I'm definitely going to play with this the coming week. Some more nondescript paper. And um, I may very well order several other pens with this nib. This uh, Schaefer Balance 2 stub nib is more sensitive to uh, the exact positioning and angle of the nib face because it is broader. It's a little easier to, um, as you're moving across the paper, lift uh, one tine over the other such that uh, you don't have full contact with the paper. I'm not finding that at all with this architect or long knife nib. Uh, partially that's due to the width of the nib, but also this Hongdian nib is a little uh, more rounded as compared to the Schaefer stub, which is almost bordering on an italic nib. So the uh, it's not quite as rounded at the edges. Anywho, that's my first impression of uh, my newest Hongdian N7. The very lovely Peacock. And as every other YouTuber says now, please, if you enjoyed this video and got this far, please click on the like button and the panic button and the subscribe and do the alarms. And make me a very, very rich man in 20 or 30 years from uh, YouTube. And thanks much for watching. And where is my little remote control to turn you off? I set that aside somewhere. So I guess I'm going to have to push the button. So enjoy the shake. Okay, just a quick addendum. Uh, and you'll be so happy to know that I found my little remote control power switch for the camera, for the phone. Uh, but now that, that wasn't the purpose of this addendum. It's a little flaw in the design of the N7, which I didn't notice with the uh, gray rabbit, but it's the same. I didn't notice it because of the, the dark color and the ink color I was using. It's not a huge major thing, but as you'll see with my ink stained hands, and hopefully I can show this with the macro lens without having to get out the microscope. We'll see. Let me see if I can just set that. Okay. Stay focus. Right here, 
this ring above the nib collects ink after you've filled. And it's the devil to easily get out. You really have to, uh, I mean, if you're cleaning with a paper towel, you almost have to just use it, the paper towel edge on to get all the ink out of this ring. And I apologize for the macro lens going a little crazy, but I think you get the idea of where I'm talking about. And the... I didn't really notice it because it's uh, gray on gray as opposed to the gold color, but you have the same design problem here with the gray rabbit. That so far, and I've used the gray rabbit for quite some time now, uh, is the only flaw that I found in these early terrific pens. And it's a design um, aspect that Hongian can, can change easily enough in the future. And I Hopefully they will listen to this uh, video or I'll, I'll give feedback directly to them. Uh, just a little bit of a pain in cleaning after filling. That's it for the addendum. And sorry that if I made you nauseous with the camera lens going in and out. And I'm now going to make use of my remote control. Bye. Maybe I am. Oh, I pressed iOS and I'm using an Android camera. I'll get the hang of this. Just wait a few more videos.